Oh, these slimy little guys, huh? What is a rhino? A Republican in name only. Well, it's somebody who gets elected by a conservative constituency, but then ends up going to Washington with seemingly ulterior motives, forming political allegiances and corporate allegiances, and essentially over time, becoming further and further detached from representing the interest of the people who elected that person in the first place. People say, oh, it's a MAGA cult. Anybody who doesn't fall in line as a peon of the former president, President Donald Trump, just gets labeled a rhino. We're not part of the cult. That's essentially what they say, but that could not be further from the truth. The truth is, you have elected officials who have essentially betrayed their oath to office. They have betrayed their constituents, betrayed their party's interest, but most importantly above all, they're slimy politicians who lack a moral foundation and lack the courage to do and say the right thing. Folks, let's talk about these rhinos. There's a five-year-old clip that's resurfaced on Twitter that we have to listen to because it raises some very interesting, some frankly amazing points. We've got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so here's the video. Twitter user by the name of Big Fish posted this. He writes, Justin Amash is running for Senate in Michigan. A small reminder on how he betrayed his most loyal supporters, Anna Timmer, got revenge and maybe the greatest takedown ever. Before we play the clip, I just want to plug Anna Timmer. This is her Twitter profile. She goes by the Twitter handle Veritas Sola. And just take a look at this epic moment. I worked on your first campaign in 2010. I knocked on hundreds of doors for you. I made hundreds of cold calls for you, inviting people to your events to meet you. I made tons of personal phone calls to friends to vote you in when you were running a bunch of, against a bunch of other people, right? That was like your hardest election versus being an incumbent, you know, in the last time you ran. So I was there for you from the very beginning. I'm not sure how many people applauding his courage were, but I would like to say since that time, I've changed my position on you. And... You have spent the last two years failing to do your job, which is to directly represent the popular will of your constituents. That's that is my, that is your job. That's not my okay? job. No, I actually I, I double checked online before I wrote that in my notes. So it is your job. My, it's on house.gov. You can read it yourself. My job is to uphold the Constitution. No, that's not that what house.gov That is my says. job. That's not what I those are not mutually exclusive. Do you realize that those are not mutually exclusive? They can be. Okay. That's why our system is designed. Not, the way not it is. in the way that you behaved. At first, okay, so you called for the nearly unprecedented step of impeachment. And at first you gave no reason. I read every single one of your tweets. And then when you were pressed, you finally gave a reason. And you came up with things like discussions of firings that never happened, rumors of recusal reversals that never happened, nobody reversed their recusal, and then made baseless claims about obstruction of justice, which I know you discussed it before, but you have to have corrupt intent. So you have to prove that Trump knew that he was guilty of a crime and knowingly tried to obstruct justice based on that, okay? You don't have that. You don't have proof of corrupt, corrupt intent. You don't. That's, that's not what the And you also says. Further know, you further know that impeachment would tear this country apart if it went through and he was removed from office. It would cause a political upheaval in this country, people in this generation have never seen before, possible civil war. You rest safe, no, yes, you rest safe in the knowledge that that will not happen, that he won't be removed from office. So you get to make the political grandstanding that raises your national profile. You are now a national household name. That's called political capital. And you are hoping to launch your star bigger and brighter than District 3. You just talked about how you did better in District 3 than Trump. Do you want to talk about how the last election you got the least amount of support that you ever have because you haven't supported the MAGA agenda? Now, that's, that's your that's right to do so. It, it's your right to support whatever you want, but you also know that you have no future in this, in this district because of that as a Republican. So you want to go bigger and brighter. And I have my final thing, my question, is why did you talk nothing about the FISA abuses? If you care about the Constitution so much, why didn't you say anything about the year-long violation of the Fourth Amendment rights of Trump and his entire transition team? Every phone call, every email, every personal conversation for a year was spied upon and recorded. And they had no knowledge. And you are laughing. You are laughing I'm, about a year-long spying on an entire team of people. Fourth Amendment's violated. And you didn't speak about it once. You didn't speak about the FISA abuses, which is currently under investigation. And you, you called A.G. AG Barr a liar without any proof. I... 
Plenty Does that look like a cult member to you? Does that look like somebody who's dumb and just following whatever Donald Trump says? Anybody who doesn't fall in line with the former president immediately becomes the enemy? Or is that somebody who raises some very, very good points? I'll let you be the judge. You can form your own opinion, but my opinion is quite clear. She hit the frickin' nail on the head. That is the issue with Rhino Republicans. I mean, for Pete's sakes, this guy said that it wasn't his job to represent the people who got him elected. By definition, his job. That's the whole purpose of the House and the Senate. Let's talk about the House, for instance. How does the system work? Well, essentially, you run to represent a small geographical location, you get elected by majority within that geographical location, then you go to Washington, to vote on behalf of those people's interest. And of course, there's all kinds of districts across the whole country, and the point is, everybody, every community, has their voice heard on a national level. But this guy, of course, does the typical grift, the typical shtick, my constitution. Every time, you notice how it's almost used as a political tool. It's a grifting tool. A lot of conservative grifters love to use the constitution as a freaking shield from all criticism. I'm a constitutional conservative. The constitution, the constitution. There's some people who are genuine in their defense of the constitution, but there are other people who, like I just said, use it as a shield. Anna Timmer was right in her response. They aren't necessarily mutually exclusive. And in fact, this individual failed spectacularly in his defense of the constitution, as he calls himself a consistent constitutional conservative, because he, along with so many of his Republican colleagues and counterparts, failed to defend the former president's constitutional rights, failed to call out the clear constitutional violations of the Democrat Party and the three-letter federal agencies throughout essentially Donald Trump's entire first term. We go straight to the FISA warrant. Where were these Republicans? When Donald Trump was facing bogus investigations, when the Democrats concocted a clear scheme to illegally spy on Donald Trump's campaign when it was clear and evident to everyone, where were the Republicans? That's what it means to be a rhino, a Republican in name only. Somebody who doesn't view it as their job to represent the people who elected them. That is the exact definition of a rhino. Somebody who's a Republican in name only doesn't actually represent Republican interests. And then individuals who seem to be part of a uniparty Washington cabal rather than actual genuine Republican conservatives. During Donald Trump's first year, and actually, I mean, it continues, we have seen the most egregious abuses of power, weaponization and politicization of the justice system, lawfare campaigns, violation of rights, legal railroading. We sit here, we cover it every single day, we talk about it, we scream about it from the mountaintops, but over and over again, every single time, we're sitting here scratching our heads, questioning, where is the Republican establishment? I mean, we just learned the other day from a James O'Keefe video from the O'Keefe Media Group the top officials at the CIA were essentially withholding pertinent information from the former president, essentially conspiracy to commit treason. Everybody in the conservative independent media sphere covered that story and put a lot of emphasis on it. But we're sitting here once again asking the same question, where is the Republican establishment? Only a couple people have spoken out about it, namely Matt Gates and others. The Freedom Caucus. Those are the only people with a consistent track record on these issues. And again, it comes right back to what I've been saying, failing in your duty to stand up when it actually actually matters to stand up in defense of the de facto leader of the Republican Party, to stand up in defense of the man who has been chosen by extreme majority by Republican voters to lead them, failing in your duty to protect that person from a legal onslaught, that's what makes you a rhino, putting your own personal interest Above all, playing the Washington game, as Anna Timmer put it, approaching politics, applying an equation that leads to a personal gain in political capital, rather than doing the right thing and representing the people who you are supposed to represent and staunchly defending the leader of your party, the person who is democratically chosen to represent the political party that you're supposedly a part of. Supposedly a part of. Get it? Republican in name only. People who use the term right. I know people who criticize Republicans as being Republicans in name only or fake Republicans, uniparty shills, are not Trump cult members. They're simply right. It's betrayal after betrayal, inaction after inaction. They've been throwing Donald Trump under the bus since day one because they're either too scared to be associated 
or they're attempting to hold on to neocon control of the party, all while claiming to be upholding the Constitution. What an absolute farce. The only thing they're upholding is the interest of the Cheney, Bush, Romney, desperate political counteroffensive. Anyways, that's pretty much what I got for you guys. Just another epic viral clip. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.